Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Brian Holman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Holman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag feature, we'll sit down with Daryl Strouts and Ray Azevedo from the Kansas Wheat Alliance. Inside Kansas Ag has K-State Research and Extension discussing limit-fed diets for pregnant beef cows. And in news you need to know, Todd Domer has our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association. We'll look back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon, and we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by Dick Edwards in Manhattan, selling America's number one truck, the Ford F-150, for over 30 years. DickEdwardsAuto.com Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Dick Edwards Auto Plaza in Junction City. Home of this year's Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Ram Truck. DickEdwardsAuto.com Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. The American Soybean Association is teaming up with others in the soybean industry to form the Ag Data Working Group to help farmers with decision making and education. Ag Data is a tool that helps ag businesses provide specific products and services based on farmers' needs. The group is working hard to establish guidelines on ownership, privacy, and the security of data collected. Mexico recently made regulation changes that now allow imports of U.S. beef and beef products from cattle of any age, lifting the 30-month cattle age limit for the U.S. beef and removing the last of Mexico's BSE-related restrictions. Despite concerns over rising beef prices in the U.S., the Mexican markets have been performing well. U.S. winter wheat production was at 1.4 billion bushels, down 9% from 2013, The U.S. yield is forecasted at 43.1 bushels per acre. Soft red winter wheat was at 447 million bushels. Hard red winter wheat at 747 million bushels was up slightly from a year ago. The European Union approved new tough restrictions that went into effect May 10th on the import of pork byproducts from the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and Japan, where outbreaks of porcine epidemic diarrhea virus have been reported. The EU says that all pig products imported from these four nations must be heat treated to 176 degrees Fahrenheit and then stored for six weeks at room temperature to kill the virus. And in local news, May is beef month in Kansas. Kansas is widely recognized for high quality beef cattle, ranking third in the U.S. in total herd size in 2013. Ranchers in Kansas raise 6 million head of safe and nutritious beef cattle on ranches and feed yards each year. The state's economy also benefits from the beef industry, which contributes nearly $9.1 billion annually and supports more than 37,000 jobs. The 2012 Census of Ag report shows that the market value of crop production in Kansas was $18.5 billion, up 28% from 2007. The number of farmers in Kansas was just under 62,000, down 6% from 2007. The average size farm was 747 acres, and the average value of production per farm was $299,000, an increase from $220,000 in 2007. The average age of the principal operator was 58 years of age. Governor Brownback signed a proclamation honoring Cooperative Extension on May 1st. The Cooperative Extension system celebrated 100 years this month and K-State officially proclaimed that the Cooperative Extension System is crucial to the land-grant mission. Up next in our Ag Feature, we'll sit down with Daryl and Ray from the Kansas Wheat Alliance to discuss the new wheat app. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. If you'd like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call at 785-554-5974. You can find us on the web at kansasagreport.com and make sure to like us on Facebook. This segment brought to you by Renzi Seeds, Midwest grower's best ally for over 70 years. RenziSeeds.com, R-E-N-Z-E Seeds.com. A.B. Flint Motor Company, 
selling quality used cars and trucks in Southeast Topeka at 32nd and South Kansas Avenue. Integrity Gun and Pawn, two Topeka locations specializing in firearms and training. IGPawn.com to learn more. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for weeds. Online at KSWheat.com. Over the past 30 years, Dick Edwards in Manhattan has been building strong personal relationships, starting the moment you walk through the door with a sales team committed to meeting your car buying needs and carrying over into our service department with technicians able to handle all of your vehicle's upkeep. We've always been upfront and honest with our pricing, offering amazing financing offers and warranty packages. If you've shopped with us before, you know that the customer always comes first. Stop in and see us. Dick Edwards in Manhattan, two miles east of the Town Center Mall on High. Way 24. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel. America's Advanced Biofuel. At AgRisk Solutions, we have been helping our clients make better crop insurance decisions since 1981. We always focus on helping you find the best coverage options for your farm, and it will give you peace of mind knowing you have a partner you can trust. To learn more about our agency, please visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. AgRisk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution. Agris Solutions is an equal opportunity provider. Trending now in Dick Edwards Auto Plaza, Kia and Dodge, Ford and Jeep, all at one location. Kia, affordable, stylish, reliable. Ram, rugged, spacious, powerful. Ford, legendary, dependable, tough. Jeep, off-road, on-road, limitless possibilities. Dick Edwards Auto Plaza, I-70 and Highway 77 in Junction City. Here at Blue River Traders, we have the greatest selection of rustic and western furniture in Kansas. At Blue River Traders, you can select from an inventory of Rustic Lodge or Western Furnishings. With a designer on hand, Blue River Traders will help create the look you desire. Carol, thanks for joining us this morning. Good to be here. Um, a new app, um, Kansas Wheat Innovation Center, along with Kansas State University, has designed a new app that helps Kansas wheat farmers, I guess, grow their crop. Yeah, it, you know, it kind of started out with just a, a, an idea on the wheat tour. We have this formula that we use uh, when we go out and check the fields. And everybody's got a smartphone, so, you know, why use pencil and paper when you can use technology? That's kind of what it started with. And so uh, the Kansas Wheat Alliance contacted Kansas State University, and we found a, a couple of grad students there that was interested in doing something uh, with it. And to be honest, it's, it's really already grown well beyond what I thought it, it could have ever been. Um, and so... Instead of just uh, doing the calculations for you, um, you know, it will actually use a couple of different formulas. One is the same formula that we use on the wheat tour. Mm -hmm. Another one is one that uh, the crop insurance adjusters use uh, when they check the crops. And then another one is one that Kansas State University uh, recommends using. So it will give you all three um, calculations mm -hmm. uh, and it will average them. But you can see what the individual ones are too now. So, uh, you know, the, the students that have been working on it, uh, Trevor Reif and Reyes Beto, we really, I think, got a long ways with it. Uh, in, kind of early in the concept, we, I kind of maybe even jokingly said, well, why don't we just get it down to the point that we just take a picture of the field and don't have to put anything in? And, and Ray's really taken that to heart, and I think we have that now. And, uh, I think it'd be interesting to see how that uh, finally develops. Well, I mean, wheat varieties, there's several different types of varieties. I mean, I would imagine there's probably hundreds of varieties. Does that take into account what different plant that you're growing? No, we don't really look at varieties so much, um, uh, although there are some differences that way. Uh, really, I think it takes a look at the number of tillers uh, that are out there, um, the row spacing, and these are pretty old kind of formulas. The plants tend to adapt, um, you know, either tillers or heads or mm -hmm. seeds as, as the growing season goes on. Um, and so that's the thing that the development of formulas really do. Are they going to be exact? No, they're only going to give you an idea of where you're at at the time that you're there. Um, but I think they are going to be a comparative thing so that a farmer as a tool 
can use this over a period of time, making management changes in between. You know, um, if, if he's irrigating, maybe he turns the water on. If he needs uh, to add fertilizer, he can do that. Um, and then he can go back and see later if maybe the changes that he's made has made some difference. Well, I know that uh, farming has is, is now gotten into the data age, and we've just got a short amount of time here before we go to break. But data, uh, there's, it's always a scary thought for farmers sharing data and having data out in, in the open space. Is that something you've taken into consideration? Well, right now we're kind of in this beta testing phase, and so we're asking everybody that is a beta tester to share that information. And it, and it does go up to the cloud uh, and where we can access it and, and then make sure that what we're, we're seeing there, it correlates to what it should be. But there is an option where farmers can opt out and, and turn that data sharing off. So it is proprietary to them. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to finish up. We're actually going to have a K-State student who basically has been designing the app and uh, we'll visit with him. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Oldy Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. Farmers Insurance, your best protection against the unexpected. Call Agent Dan Key at 785 408 5459. Grass and grain, online or in the mail, keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Blue River Traders, the finest selection of Western-style furniture for your home. BlueRiverTraders.com Ray, thanks for joining us this morning. It's great to be here. Uh, PhD student uh, in uh, soil sciences. Did I get that right? That's correct. All right. Uh, and plus, you're a young guy, so you're kind of a little, you understand the techie stuff more than some of us older guys <laughs> do. So uh, you're the designer of the app. Uh, the new wheat app. So uh, tell us how we kind of, your thoughts starting it and where it is today. Uh, well, at the at the start, you know, Kansas Wheat Alliance put out the proposal to have the wheat app designed and uh, Trevor Reif and I came to KWA to approach them with some of our ideas. And I was glad that Trevor and I were able to collaborate on this and uh, another graduate student named Nan An also joined us on, on this project. And when what, what we set out to do, designing the app, was try to make it very intuitive, not have a lot of screens on it where it will be e very easy to use, not require any instructions. And its design has been ever-changing ever since we started. And then after this latest beta test on the tour, there's some more changes that we're going to make to make it very easy for users to use, to give them yield estimations in the field. And we're very excited about the picture yield estimation side of things. It's pretty pretty new and I don't believe anybody else has something like that yet. What's your hope for the app long term? Well long term I would like to see more farmers and consultants use it and uh, get more information in from them on ways they think we can change it to make it better serve them, help them in production of wheat, better yield estimations and perhaps evolve it to where it can help them make different fertilizer recommendations, evaluate the status of their wheat crop at that current time based off the pictures and then they can assess more fields faster and then they can address more issues and perhaps make a better wheat crop. Okay, version one is available I, or version 1.1 or 1.2 or you want? We just completed the beta test of version 1.0 1. 1. Okay. and that was just the beta version to help us find all the kinks and things that need to be changed. And so that one's getting ready to be decommissioned. We're getting ready to come out with version 1.5 which will have all the changes that we made from the wheat tour and then from there will be version 2.0, which will do the picture yield estimations in the app automatically for the user. And so we're looking to have that done hopefully in another four weeks. And so then we can start sending out to people to see what they think of it. Um, iPhones versus Androids, does it matter when using the app? Apple's always better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's actually available for Android and iOS. Okay. Uh, sorry, BlackBerry users. I don't think we'll intend to put that in on that format. But Android is available on Google Play, so you can get a beta version on there. Uh, iOS will be available by contacting KWA, and you can get in contact with me, and then I can get people in on being a beta tester, and we can send the app, iOS app out to them that way. For, I'm assuming down the road it'll be a free app. From my understanding, yes, it will be a free app, and they'll be able to, at that point of its official release, it'll be on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Okay, real quick, uh, email that they can get a hold of you at. 
ARA4747 at KSU.edu. Feel free to contact me with any questions. I'll be glad to help them out. I'm Katie Allen with K-State Research and Extension, and with me today is Dr. Justin Wagner, who's a Beef System Specialist for K-State, and he's speaking today at the 100th Beef Roundup in Hayes. And you're speaking on some research you've recently completed, talking about limit-fed diets for pregnant beef cows. Can you explain that research further? Yeah, uh, essentially the, uh, the objective of this experiment was to build on some previous work we'd done uh, here at K-State looking at the process of using anhydrous ammonia to treat low quality roughages like wheat straw, corn stalks, etc. And uh, actually exploring, uh, bringing the rate of application of the anhydrous ammonia down to, to approximately a half rate. Uh, the traditional rate that we typically recommend as extension specialists uh, has been a 3% application and so a couple years ago we we launched several uh, large uh, case studies, if you will, across the state of Kansas, kind of looking at what uh, what the response in terms of the forage would be if we cut that rate in half. Um, our primarily interest in doing so was the cost of anhydrous ammonia. When a lot of the, the research was done to establish that rate of 3% was about $200 a ton. Um, today we'd be looking at anhydrous ammonia prices that would be seven to $800 a ton. So there's some, some opportunity for some cost savings with it. We'd done a lot of forage work, but we really hadn't had the opportunity to do an actual cow feeding study. And so if you're familiar with the kind of the, the hot topics in the beef cattle industry right now, um, especially with drought, is talking about confinement feeding. Uh, that kind of coupled with, you know, using low quality forages and, and byproducts. That's, that's kind of what our study today is about. And you had an addition of wet distiller's grains in with this diet. Can you explain why that was an addition to it? Sure. At the, at the time, a lot of the research that was done with uh, anhydrous ammonia and the application of forages, really wet uh, byproducts, uh, wet distiller's grains, corn gluten feed, etc., really weren't on the radar of most beef cattle producers. So that those forages, the ammoniated forages, really were not evaluated. So, so it was an opportunity to us for maybe to take uh, something that was relatively old, put it in more of what I would consider to be a, maybe a more modern diet with the use of the wet byproduct. Summarize our results, we, we observed kind of what I would say is the classical response to, to treated forages. We still observed an improvement in uh, cow average daily gain. This was an 84-day uh, cow feeding study to where basically the average daily gain was highest uh, among the cows that received the wheat straw that had been treated with the 3% rate, uh, so intermediate for the, uh, the cows that received the 1.5% rate. So actually the maximum response was at the 3%, but from an optimum response in terms of cost, it looks like that 1.5% rate might have some benefits. Well, that's Justin Wagner with K-State. He's a beef system specialist speaking today at the 100th Beef Roundup in Hayes. I'm Katie Allen reporting for K-State Research and Extension. You can find us on the web at kansasagreport.com and make sure to like us on Facebook. This segment brought to you by Renzi Seeds, Midwest growers' best ally for over 70 years. RenziSeeds.com, R-E-N-Z-E Seeds.com. A.B. Flint Motor Company, selling quality used cars and trucks in Southeast Topeka at 32nd and South Kansas Avenue. Integrity Gun and Pawn, two Topeka locations specializing in firearms and training. IGPawn.com to learn more. Impact Satellite, your local authorized direct TV dealer. Impact Satellite at 785-554-5974. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Trending now in Dick Edwards Auto Plaza, Kia and Dodge, Ford and Jeep, all at one location. Kia, affordable, stylish, reliable. Ram, rugged, spacious, powerful. Ford, legendary, dependable, tough. Jeep, off-road, on-road, limitless possibilities. Dick Edwards Auto Plaza, I-70 and Highway 77 in Junction City.
Tammy the Pro Home Plus is all about providing warmth and kindness to aging individuals who find it difficult to live on their own. Tammy's team is made up of experienced caregivers and nurses committed to the highest level of individualized care, focusing on health and well-being, and assisting with nutrition, grooming, medications, therapies, and daily living needs, all in a warm, caring environment. Call Tammy the Pro Home Plus today at 785-383-7094 to learn how we can help. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Over the past 30 years, Dick Edwards in Manhattan has been building strong personal relationships, starting the moment you walk through the door with a sales team committed to meeting your car buying needs and carrying over into our service department with technicians able to handle all of your vehicle's upkeep. We've always been upfront and honest with our pricing, offering amazing financing offers and warranty packages. If you've shopped with us before, you know that the customer always comes first. Stop in and see us. Dick Edwards in Manhattan, two miles east of the Town Center Mall on Highway 24. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Since 1983, the Hydrobed has been utilized on cattle operations throughout North America. The Hydrobed equips your three-quarter or one-ton truck for hay handling and feeding. Variable speed cable controls or the optional wireless remote enable you to haul, transport, and unroll two round bales weighing up to 3,000 pounds each. A mechanical free float automatically compensates for uneven ground and out of round bales, isolating you and the truck from impact of bale unrolling. To find out how the Hydrobed can improve your feeding efficiency, call or visit us on the web at triple-c-inc.com. The results of an on-site audit conducted by the USDA Food Safety and Inspection Service confirmed Brazil's meat inspection system fails to meet food safety protocols required of countries exporting to the United States. This final audit report reinforces the National Cattlemen's Beef Association's recent opposition to a proposed USDA rule that would allow fresh beef imports from certain regions of Brazil. The Kansas Livestock Association and other state affiliates joined the national organization late last month in filing comments that call on USDA to withdraw the rule. The industry organizations based this recommendation on Brazil's inability to prevent the spread of foot and mouth disease. In its final audit, FSIS found Brazil failed to fully enforce hazard analysis and critical control point system plans and records in five facilities. Inspection personnel also were found to be not fully enforcing sanitation requirements that prevent cross-contamination of bovine carcasses in one establishment. After reading the report, cattle organizations are convinced now more than ever that Brazil is not capable of holding its industry to the same standards as the United States. If Brazil can't manage their food safety equivalency standards, how can the U.S. cattle industry trust they have the safeguards in place to protect animal health? If you'd like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call at 785-554-5974. Good morning, I'm Chris Haverkamp with Paragon Ag and as we take a look at the grain markets this week, we first take a step back to the May 9th USDA report. In this report, we cornered the bull in the catch pen, so to speak, for both corn and wheat. Corn's domestic carryout was trimmed down to 1.15 billion bushels versus 1.33 a month ago, meanwhile increasing the world carryout to a bearish 181.7 million metric tons. In wheat, the domestic carryout was also trimmed down to 746 million, but similar to corn, Wheat's world carryout was raised to a bearish 186.5 million metric tons. Yet despite the fact that winter wheat's production estimate was considered bullish, the carryout figures were just too much for the market to overcome. And this past Monday, the bulls had hoped to regain some of the ground lost from the USDA report, but we had actually experienced an incredible week of corn planting, which now has a standing right in line at the five-year average. 
So with a week of cool, damp weather, the fall crops are off to a great start and the wheat doesn't look quite as bad, at least in some areas. And we believe that both of these markets will continue to move sideways overall, but with a bearish tone. And it will most likely be well after we harvest before we can stage any type of significant rally. Key support in July KC wheat is $8. Meanwhile, December corn support is at $4.85. Should we breach those levels, most indicators turn bearish. Should you have any questions regarding the corn of the wheat market, please give us a call at 888-452-8751. Closed captioning brought to you by Dick Edwards in Manhattan, selling America's number one truck, the Ford F-150, for over 30 years. DickEdwardsAuto.com Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Dick Edwards Auto Plaza in Junction City, home of this year's Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Ram Truck. DickEdwardsAuto.com. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of Kansas. I'm Brian Holman, and thanks for watching. Here at Blue River Traders, we have the greatest selection of rustic and western furniture in Kansas. At Blue River Traders, you can select from an inventory of rustic lodge or western furnishings. With a designer on hand, Blue River Traders will help create the look you desire. Spring is sprung and Premier Farm and Home has what you need to keep your yard crabgrass free throughout the season. With a complete line of pre-emergence, you can stop crabgrass before it starts. Premier Farm and Home, 900 Southwest University Boulevard or find them on the web at haycow.com. Tammy the Pro Home Plus is all about providing warmth and kindness to aging individuals who find it difficult to live on their own. Tammy's team is made up of experienced caregivers and nurses committed to the highest level of individualized care, focusing on health and well-being and assisting with nutrition, grooming, medications, therapies, and daily living needs, all in a warm, caring environment. Call Tammy the Pro Home Plus today at 785-383-7094 to learn how we can help.